AI SEO is how you get LLMs like ChatGPT to mention your brand as much as possible. Be careful because a lot of AI SEO advice is broken for three main reasons. Number one, these AI models change all the time. So advice that works today might not work a week later. Number two, even tactics that still work might not be relevant for your industry. And number three, this one's really the worst, AI makes it easy to get duped by experts who don't even have real world experience. So what's the solution? Don't blindly accept advice on SEO. You need to test your changes like a scientist and figure out what works and what doesn't. In this video, I've partnered with SEMrush to show you how to do that using their AI visibility toolkit. I'm David, I work with Kevin to bring you more great tutorials like this one. Let's dive in. Let's start with what is the goal? Well, when someone asks an AI model about a topic, sometimes it mentions brands. We just want it to mention our brand as much as possible. So winning an answer to a prompt is not like winning a Google search. You don't just want the first mention, you want the most mentions. Winning as many answers as possible drives more highly qualified traffic to your website and then it's up to you to turn that traffic into leads and customers. To do this, we're going to adapt the seven step playbook detailed by Ethan Smith on his interview on Lenny's podcast, which I'll link up in the top right. We'll start with steps one and two. Figure out what questions you wanna rank for and track those questions. We'll use SEMrush to help you find those questions. Head to the link in the description below to sign up for the AI Visibility Toolkit. Once you're on that page, click Start Now. Then enter your email and a password so you can create your account. Now you will be asked for a credit card because the price is $99 per month. For the rest of this video, I'll show you exactly what you get. So you'll know if SEMrush is right for you. Once you sign up, you'll land here on the AI Visibility Toolkit homepage. There are a lot of tools you can use to find the right questions to target, but don't overlook your own search data first. A great way to start with that is the Google Search Console. If you don't know this tool, definitely bookmark it. You can find the link under the resources section in the description. You can find which queries drive the most traffic to your website, then head over to ChatGPT or your LLM of choice and ask it to generate questions for you based on those search terms. This will give you a list of questions to consider optimizing your site for. As you browse through these, you wanna make sure that you target questions that mention brands. Take note of the questions you wanna target, we'll use them later. Now, what if you're just starting out and you don't have search data? Well, SEMrush can help you there too. Back in the AI Visibility Toolkit, move your mouse over the AI button, that's the third button from the top, and then click on the Prompt Research tool. Here, just start typing a topic that you wanna rank for. And then don't click on Analyze right away. Make sure you choose one of the suggestions provided for you. Otherwise, it'll select the best match topic and that might not be what you want. When you scroll down here, you can see the specific prompts that comprise this topic. SEMrush has access to one of the most extensive prompt databases for ChatGPT. That includes data for over 100 million queries. With any prompt, you can click on the view full response link to see a sample response. Now remember, the way that ChatGPT and other models work is that there's some element of randomness. That means if you ask, can you recommend the best AI writing tool for novel writing, you might get a slightly different answer from what's shown here. You can also see the brands mentioned by name, as well as explicit sources that are linked to. Now, while this is interesting, the whole point here is to find a set of questions that you're interested in targeting. So let me share a few other tips here. Pay attention to average topic difficulty. This is a score based on two factors, competitor strength and opportunity size. On competitor strength, if you have to outperform really well-known brands, it's gonna be much harder to break in and that makes the topic more difficult. Opportunity size compares how many brand positions or mentions are available for this topic versus the average across all topics. If it seems like the AI doesn't mention that many brands compared to other topics, 
then that makes it more difficult too. Now, what if you need even more inspiration? That's totally fine. SEMrush gives you many more tools to look through, and we'll start with the visibility overview tool. Here, you'll type in your domain first. I'll use a domain I used in our last SEMrush tutorial called hyperwriteai.com, and then click Check AI Visibility. Treat this page as your dashboard for AI mentioned performance. On this page, we'll focus on your performing topics. These are topics where AI has already mentioned your brand. It's usually easier to level up on these topics than tackle new ones. HyperWrite AI is an AI writing assistant, so a topic like AI sympathy and condolence message generation might actually be good to focus on. Expanding any topic reveals prompts associated with that topic. Once again, you can see the full response, but you'll also see whether your brand was mentioned or missed in that response. Questions like this one, where your brand was not mentioned, but it's in a topic where your brand has high visibility otherwise, can be great targets for AI SEO. Definitely sort these topics by other headers like your mentions or AI volume. Relevant, high volume topics can be great opportunities to optimize for. For example, an AI writing assistant like HyperWrite should be all over these questions like how to make a quote, how to write an essay with quotes, and so on. When you find a prompt to target, step two is to start tracking it. To do this, click the magnifying glass on the far right of the row. Here you'll set up prompt tracking. You can add a list of prompts, as well as a list of targets like ChatGPT or Google's AI mode. Click Start Tracking, and we'll cover how this works in the next step. Now, there are two other places you should consider sourcing questions from. For the first, let's go back to the AI icon and then click on Competitor Research. This compares your brand's AI presence to those of your competitors. If you scroll down to the Topics and Prompts section, you'll see some new opportunities. My recommendation is to check the topics that you're weak in. AI email and content generation tools seems highly relevant, but were not mentioned that much. Just like before, you can monitor prompts one by one, or you can choose to monitor all prompts for a topic. You do have limits to how many prompts you can track at a time though, so be aware of those. Another path to question or prompt inspiration is to go back to the AI button, and this time under brand performance, go to narrative drivers. Enter your domain here to get a comprehensive brand report. It takes about five minutes, so I'm gonna use one I've created earlier. There's a lot to look at here, but let's scroll down to where it says dive deeper. We're focused on non-branded and branded answers. Non-branded answers gives you ideas on how to help people discover you. Then you can scroll back up and select branded answers, and this gives you super specific questions that people are asking about your product. I know it's a lot of places to get prompts from, but my suggestion is not to overthink it. Stick with one to two topics of questions because that'll make it easier to see the impact of your work. When you have your list of questions, make sure you consolidate them by going again to the AI button and then to the prompt tracking tool. Click on your project or create a project if you haven't already, then click on overview. Scroll down to the prompt section, and then add any more prompts you have by clicking the Add Prompts button. So now we have our list of questions and prompts, we need more brand mentions. That leads us to step three, run controlled experiments. Now anything we do to change our brand's visibility is a tactic, and we need to test those tactics by basically running a science experiment. Split the questions that you're tracking into two groups, a test group and a control group. You'll make changes to improve your brand's visibility with the test group of questions, not the control group. Now, after you make your changes, you'll wanna wait at least a week or two and then check your visibility again. Simply speaking, a positive change is one where your test group outperforms the control group. Remember, the control group visibility can still change even if you don't do anything to impact it because the AI models change all the time. This is why you measure. So try to split those questions so they cover different topics. We've just covered prompt level tracking, but there's also overall performance. You can find that back in the brand performance tool. Check out the share of voice versus sentiment chart. Over time, you'd like to see your brand move up and to the right. 
While you're here, be sure to check out the key business drivers section. This can give you ideas for additional topics to outperform your competitors. And if you want to look at AI SEO strategies, scroll all the way down to the AI strategic opportunities section. This will give you some ideas to address multiple business drivers at once. With that, let's get into the tactics with step four. Find out what type of content ranks for each prompt. We're back in the prompt tracking tool. Let's say we want to improve our visibility for the prompt after interview questions. From here, you can view the ChatGPT response by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. Then check out which pages get cited. You'll see these citations in little gray bubbles after the main text. So JSG Inc. is cited, this careers page is cited, as well as Indeed. Then click on some of the citations. You want to find the style of each article that gets cited. For example, this is a listicle. It's an article written in the form of a list for each interview question. Make sure you repeat this process for multiple citations so you figure out what type of article works best for each prompt. Now it's time for step number five, writing your content. You'll want to write your content to address a specific topic and include answers to a ton of different questions, ideally over a hundred of them. And those can be very specific follow-up questions too. So for example, you could ask ChatGPT, what are 25 example long tail follow-up questions that you'd expect a user to write after they write the question after interview questions. This is a great way to brainstorm what you should address in an article without completely outsourcing your writing to AI. And if you have a product, make sure you leverage your site's help center to answer long tail questions like this too. So that's it for content, but you still need step six, an offsite brand mention strategy. Sometimes you might find that a question has more off-site citations like Reddit, YouTube, Quora, or other affiliates, so you need a strategy to get mentioned there too. SEMrush can help you target the right platforms. We're back here on the Brand Performance Narrative Drivers tool. This time, let's click on Citations. The top domains in this list are where you should consider posting content or paying for it to be posted. Now, generally, B2B sites might do better with YouTube and Reddit posts, and B2C sites might be better on well-known affiliate sites. Those you'll probably need to pay for. Finally, we're on to step seven, fix your AI SEO errors. The AI Visibility Toolkit has a site audit tool to diagnose and fix technical SEO errors on your site. You can access it by going to the AI icon and then going under Boost and Monitor, clicking on Site Audit. I set up an audit on the HyperWrite homepage earlier, and in this video, we'll cover some of the AI errors. Draw your attention to the AI Search Health chart, and then you can click on Issues to figure out what you need to do next. Now for any issue, you can move your mouse over the why and how to fix it and click it to get more details. Sometimes these can feel a bit obvious, but because AI SEO keeps changing, SEMrush will keep you updated on what you need to pay attention to. Fix those technical SEO errors and keep them fixed because they can have a drastic negative impact on how you show up in AI responses. And those are the seven steps to starting your AI SEO strategy. You decide the questions to rank for, you track those questions, run controlled experiments, find which content types work, then write your content, get offsite mentions, and run AI SEO audits. Drop us a like if you learned something today and check out SEMrush's AI Visibility Toolkit in the description below to start measuring your impact. I'm David DeWinter and I'll see you in the next video.